And today is 10-28-15. Okay, so we are going to count atoms, and pretty much nobody says, oh yeah, I remember mole, and I'm really good at those kind of conversions, and this is easy, good, I got this. You don't even have to do this unit. That's fine. Um, the mole is a concept, and it's a lot like a dozen. Okay? So what's a mole? Other than this adorable small furry creature with um, ridiculously large mitts and very ridiculously tiny eyes, they do have eyes. They're just tiny, tiny, tiny and covered in fur because when you live in the dark, you don't really need to spend a whole lot of energy building great eyes. Um, the mole is an SI unit and it's amount of a substance and it is just like a dozen. So how many cookies are in a dozen cookies? How many donuts are in a dozen donuts? How many socks are in a dozen socks? How many students are in a dozen students? Is this getting repetitive yet? So the mole is the same kind of thing. It's just a much larger number. Um, it is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pieces of anything. Cookies, dirty socks, frat boys, coffee cups, um, iPads, rulers, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It's a lot of things. Now, it's also, this is, this is listed here first, but I'll call it the secondary definition. It's the amount of something that has the same number of pieces as 12 grams of carbon-12. Okay, And we're doing this a little bit out of order, so we're going to gloss over this until we come, we're going to come back to that. So it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of anything. Apples, cotton balls, dirty socks, M&Ms, cupcakes, rabid chipmunks, moles, um, pots of soup, bowls of cereal, two-year-olds. Oh my god, that's terrifying. Um, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of anything is a mole of that thing. So when we're talking chemistry, we're typically talking about atoms or molecules. And right now in this chapter, because we haven't done um, bonding and, and compounds yet, we're going to be talking about individual atoms. So if I tell you that I have two moles, and you'll love this, the SI, official SI abbreviation for the mole is M-O-L. They saved you one letter. Don't write M, don't write M-L. M is meter, ML is, I don't know what that is. M-O-L is the abbreviation for mole. So if I tell you that I have two moles of carbon atoms, can you determine how many carbon atoms that is? Sure, because you know how many carbon atoms are in one mole of something. So this is going to be a factor label, and this is an intro to the kind of factor label we're going to do all year. Um, in any factor label problem, like the metric conversions that you were doing, you start off with your given, and here our given is two moles of carbon atoms equals how many carbon atoms? So our given is two moles of carbon atoms. We're going to put that in the first spot. Two moles carbon atoms. So, in any factor label, like when we were doing our metric conversions, what has to be true of the units? What has to be true of the units? They have to do what on a, on a slant? They have to cancel. So we know that what <coughs> units are going to be down in this space? What are our units up here? This is a, this I know. This is this is why I asked because it's not obvious. What are our units? Are they meters? Are they moles? Are they grams? Are they liters? Do you see a unit there? What kinds of things are we describing? 
atoms. Atoms are actually our unit. So we know that down in this bottom space, the units have to be atoms. Now what I will start saying to you is units and chemical have to cancel. Um, we're not going to be doing factor labels yet that have more than one chemical, but we will soon. So I want you to always make sure you write the chemical too. So this is carbon atoms. And, oh geez. Good Lord, I'm an idiot. And nobody yelled at me. It's not carbon atoms. What are our units on the top? Moles. This is what happens when I don't finish my second cup of coffee before I see you all. I'm sorry. Can we back up and flush all of that? We'll see what happens if I try to resume recording from here. Okay, so we've got two moles of carbon. And we set, your book sometimes uses the phrasing, two moles of such and such atoms. And it's confusing, and that's exactly why it's confusing. I just went down that rabbit hole myself. So on that top, what are your units again? Yeah. Moles. Can we just flush the, the dumb blind alley that I led you down? Your units on the top are moles. The chemical you're in is carbon. So down here, we're going to put moles of carbon. So our units and our chemical will cancel. What units do we want to end up in? Atoms, yeah, atoms of carbon. <clears throat> we want to end up in atoms of carbon. Now, all of the conversions we've ever done <coughs> have been based on a relationship where something equals something else. 10 to the negative third meters equals one millimeter. What's the relationship between moles and atoms? <coughs> Times 10 to the 23rd, what? Equals one mole. So, and we'll, we'll back it up and do the inverse case so that you have this to remember. One mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So now it's down to just a straight factor label. You know how to do this. So what is it? 12.044 times 10 to the 23rd and we will have to fix our scientific notation. So 12.044 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon contained in two moles of carbon. Um, if we're fixing scientific notation, one, two, zero, four, four. So if I'm coming back one more, that would be 1.2044 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. How many sig figs do I have here for my final answer? Oh gosh, yeah, it should. I'd like to say I'm just keeping you on my toes and I'm not just making stupid mistakes all day today, but I have a feeling it's not going to turn out that way. Okay, how many sig figs do I have? Where, where do you get your sig figs from? From your given. How many sig figs in your given? What's your given? What's your given? Two is your given. Two moles of carbon atoms. How many sig figs in that? One. So how many sig figs can you have in your answer? One. So your final answer for this is actually 1 times 10 to the 24th carbon atoms. I gave you 615 donuts. Can you tell me how many dozen donuts that is? Using a factor label. Okay, what's your given? 615. 
Now, what units have to cancel on the bottom? Donuts. Individual donuts. And what unit do we want to be in? Dozens. So, what's the relationship between dozen and donuts? One and twelve. One and twelve. What goes where? So, there are two options. We can have 12 on the top and one on the bottom, or one on the top and 12 on the bottom. Okay. One dozen donuts equals 12 donuts. One dozen donuts equals 12 donuts. It seems silly because you all look at that and go, well, you just divide by 12. Duh, I know that. It seems silly to take this longhand approach of setting it up and canceling your units. You know, do our units cancel? Yeah, donuts cancel, donuts cancel, we end up in dozens. Okay. The reason that I want you to build the discipline for doing this is because we'll end up doing factor labels that are like five chunks long. They're like five step factor labels. So I want you to build the habit with the short ones and get really good at it so that when we get to the really big problems, it's not a problem. If I give you, if I give you 0.842 moles of iron, how many atoms of iron is that? Pardon my messy writing on here. How many atoms of iron is that? So this is a factor label. And what's your given? Zero point eight four two what? Moles of iron. So what units and what chemical go in the bottom in the next space to cancel? Moles of iron. What units and what chemical go up top to end up in? Atoms of iron. What's the relationship? Hmm? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And where does that go? On the top. So one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Awesome. Times 10 to the 23rd, and what are our units? Atoms. Atoms of iron. Okay. So that's our raw answer, 5.070524 times 10 to the 23rd. Atoms of iron. How many sig figs do we have? Three. And that comes from our given. So what's our final answer going to look like? 5.07 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of iron. Okay. These are not too bad, are they? What if I gave you a number of atoms and wanted to know how many moles that was? <clears throat> Just the same thing in reverse, right? Let's practice one like that. Okay, so if I have 7.5 times 10 to the 24th, Fourth, atoms of magnesium. What I want to know is how many moles of magnesium is that? I always start with my what? Given. So we have our given in the box. What units and chemical go below to cancel? Atoms of magnesium. What units and chemical go on top to end up in? Moles of magnesium. Okay. I'm going to give you one of the one of the first of the <clears throat> ten commandments of conversions in chemistry. You will never put any number other than one in front of the number in front of the word mole, unless it's a given. So what number is going to go in front of mole? Always and forever and forever and forever and always.
one. Because one of the common mistakes is flipping those numbers. <clears throat> okay. And how many atoms of magnesium and one mole of magnesium? 6.022. Yeah, you can all say it like zombies together, muttering brains. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Atoms of magnesium. Okay, so you got a calculator. Do your math. Who's got a raw answer? So we have this times what? So, 10 to the first. Because that whole thing would be times 10 to the 24 minus 23. Or times 10 to the first. So, now let's do our sig figs. How many sig figs do we get? Two. Two. So our final answer is going to be to the first, which we could also just say 12, 12 moles of iron. Okay, let's do one more um, from atoms to moles. Okay, so we have 1.15 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. I want to know how many moles of sodium that is. What's my given? Yeah. Next box, units and chemical to cancel. Hmm. Up above, units and chemical. Pardon? Moles of sodium. Yep. Okay. Where does my one go? Top. Always and forever, one shall go in front of moles as a conversion factor. And the number on the bottom is? 6.02. Go ahead. Keep coming. 2 times 10 to the 23rd. Brains. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. I have had chemistry students suggest that they would get that tattooed on their arm. Um, but you're going you're gonna to have it memorized by the end of the week anyway. So why waste a, why waste a perfectly good space? Okay. Do your math, get a raw number. Okay, what you got? 0 0.19. Okay, 0 0.19 what? 0.966. Okay. 4.56 times what? Nothing. So, the 23rd's cancel. So, we can actually, we don't have to move a decimal, which is kind of nice. What's our final answer? Because we have how many for sig figs? Three. So our final answer is? 0.191. And our units are moles of sodium. So almost two tenths of a mole. Okay. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy, yes? So I'm going to introduce you. I would like you to meet your GMA. Anybody in here have someone in their life who they call GMA? Okay. It doesn't pop up all the time. Um, you know, we got Graham's grandma, grandmother, Omi, Nana, whatever you call her. Your GMA. You can call her G. I have a friend whose son, who's now 16, it was really adorable when he was three, it's kind of weird now, calls her mother dude. Okay. Yeah, but what does my grandma have to do with chemistry, you say? Why, I'm glad you asked. GMA is not just take four. Well, look at this. Moles to atoms. Atoms to moles. Okay, Moser, it's not that hard. I can remember that I can go from moles to atoms and atoms to moles. Do you sense that we're about to throw a wrinkle into the plan? G, yeah. Um, so, there's a funny thing. So, what you already know about the periodic table, you know it's got all the elements listed on it, and we're going to talk more about this in the tutorial that you're going to view tomorrow. You know that there are some numbers on it. You probably know, probably remember that this is the atomic number. It's the number of protons. You'll get review on that in your tutorial tomorrow. 
You probably remember that this is the, the atomic mass, that that's what an atom of that stuff weighs. So an atom of magnesium weighs 24.305 atomic mass units. We'll talk more about that in your tutorial tomorrow. So here's the weird part. Are you all buckled in, strapped, strapped in, buckled up? The safety bar is down. One mole, and we're talking about magnesium here for now, one mole of magnesium weighs this in grams. Ooh. Nobody seems flabbergasted. So, one mole of scandium weighs what? Yeah, weighs 44.956 grams. One mole of potassium weighs what? 39.098 grams. Are you sensing a trend here? Every single element on the periodic table, one mole of that stuff, one mole of vanadium, has a mass of 50.942 grams. Okay? This is called molar mass. So this is molar mass. It's the mass of one mole of anything. So do you sense that we're getting to the G? We can go from grams to moles, and we can go from moles to grams because of that relationship. So let's practice a problem like that. If I hand you, let's see which ones I can remember off the top of my head, 22.99 grams of sodium. And I want to know how many moles of sodium that is. What do you need to do? So, let's, let's back up to the first step for any conversion, for any factor label kind of conversion. Take the given, put it where? First box. So, 22.99 grams of sodium. Units in chemical on the bottom to cancel are going to be what? Grams of sodium. Units in chemical on the top to end up in? Moles of sodium. This is not that hard, Moser. I don't know what you're freaking out about. Okay. What numbers go where? So what did we say about moles as a conversion factor? What always goes in front of moles? One. So let's stick that one in there before we can do something dumb. Um, this is just like with doing the metric conversions where I say I always stick my one in immediately so I can't do something stupid because I will. I will trip over my own feet. Um, you might trip over your own too, so stick that one in immediately. Now, how many grams of sodium are there in one mole of sodium? Where are we going to get that information? To the periodic table. This is like to the bat cave. So we go to the periodic table. Yay, I did remember that correctly. And lo and behold, what's the molar mass of sodium? 22.99 grams. So how many moles of sodium is this? One. Yeah. Well, that was stupidly easy. Let's do one that's not quite so stupidly easy that actually requires the use of your calculator. 450.2 grams of copper. See you. The mnemonic I use for that, I see you stealing that copper. <laughs> Better than the gold. You know what gold is, right? A U. A U! Come back with my gold watch!
There are a lot of them. Okay, what's my first step? Given. Units in chemical below to cancel. Grams of copper. Units in chemical up, up above. Moles of copper. Okay, stick the one in before we can do something dumb. Who's got the molar mass of copper? 65.63.546, right? Okay. All right, do your math. What's your raw answer? And I ran out of space, so I did stop writing. But yeah, 7.08463165, and grams of copper cancel out, so I'm left with moles of copper. How many sig figs do I have? How many? Four. Four sig figs there. So my final answer should be 7.08, what? Five. Moles of copper. Okay, wonderful, easy, not too bad. That's gram to mol grams to moles. Let's do moles to grams. Okay, I want. I have three point. Whoops, three point five. We're doing moles to grams here. Three point five moles of potassium. I want to know how many grams of potassium I have. So what's my first step? The given. 3.5 moles of potassium. Units in chemical down below to cancel. What are my units in chemical? Yeah, moles of potassium. Units in chemical up top. Grams of potassium. Stick that one in there before you can do something dumb. And where is that grams information coming from? periodic table. So what's the molar mass of potassium? 30.9.0983. Okay. Who's got a raw number? And what are my units? Yeah, moles of potassium cancel. I'm left with grams of potassium. How many sig figs do I have? Two. What's my final answer going to be? 140. Because you're rounding this number based on what comes after it. So your final answer will be 140 grams of potassium. Okay, these are not terribly difficult. Do you sense once more that there's a complication coming? There always is. When I say, oh, that wasn't so bad, now, <laughs> don't answer again. For only $19.99, you also get these amazing Ginsu knives. You don't even get that reference, do you? Shoot. <sighs> okay. What if we want to go from grams to atoms? You would. Yes. That's why we use GMA. Or from atoms to grams. So these are multi-step conversions. You always have to go through moles. You cannot ever go directly from grams to atoms or atoms to grams. You have to go through moles. That's why I write GMA on things, because it's just a reminder that if you're starting out in atoms and you want to go to grams, you've got to go through moles first. And if you're starting out in grams and you want to go to atoms, you've got to go through moles first. Always remember your GMA. She will help you with conversions. I have 253 grams of silver, and I would like to know how many atoms of silver I'm holding. So if you had a pure silver ring, you could take the mass of that ring and actually figure out how many individual atoms of silver you had. It's crazy and kind of mind-blowing. What's our first step? Given 253 grams of silver. 
What goes in our next box below to cancel? Grams of silver. What goes above? Moles of silver. Because we have to go through moles. In our next box, what goes down below to cancel? Moles of silver. What goes up above to end up in? Atoms of silver. Now, let's start plugging in numbers. Moles always gets what in front of it? One. And the number of the moles shall be one, it shall not be zero, it shall not be two, it shall be one. How many grams of silver are in a mole of silver? Where do we get that information? Periodic table. Let's go. Okay, 107.8682 grams of silver in one mole of silver. How many atoms of silver in a mole of silver? 10 to the 23rd. Good. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So now we've gone from moles to atoms. Okay. Let's do the math. So we have the setup for the problem, multiplying all of our numbers and then dividing by what's on the bottom. Who has a raw number? Raw answer, no fixing it up, no gussying it up, no makeovers. 14. Good. Times 10 to the 23rd, and we're in atoms of silver. We obviously need to correct the scientific notation on this. So if we're moving that way, this way, um, it's going to be times 10 to the 24th. How many sig figs do we have? Three. Three, because Three, we're getting them from here. So we're going to end up with 1.4 what? One times ten to the twenty-third. Oh gosh, I keep doing that. Atoms of silver. Okay. Okay, so on the practice sheet, um, the top. What's the molar mass? That's just testing your ability to look up molar masses from the periodic table. When it says don't forget your units, molar mass is always in what units? Grams. Grams. Um, yeah, that's pretty easy. So I think you're, you're fine with that. We just did grams to atoms, right? Let's do one atoms to grams. Okay, um, number 13 on the back. If you want additional practice together, we'll do 13 together. So what is the mass in grams of 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 25th atoms of uranium? Okay, so we've got 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 25th atoms of uranium. We want to know what is its mass in grams. What's our first step? given. So 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 25th atoms of uranium. In our next box, what goes down and below to cancel? Atoms. And what goes above that, because remember, GMA we're starting off in atoms, we got to go through moles before we can get to grams. So what goes above that? Moles. Moles of uranium. And in our last box, what goes on the bottom to cancel? Moles of uranium. What goes in the top box to end up in? Grams of uranium. <clears throat> Before we can do anything stupid, stick our ones in there. Before I can do anything stupid, I should say. 
You may be entirely smarter than I am today. I think it would not be all that difficult. <sighs> it's been that kind of day. Okay. How many atoms of uranium and one mole of uranium? Six point zero two two times ten to the twenty third. And how many grams of uranium and a mole of uranium? Two hundred and thirty eight point zero eight two nine, you said? Zero two eight nine one. Okay, now you're just down to me. I get this for a raw answer: three hundred ninety one point three one two eight eight seven six times ten to the second. Yes. Okay. So if I'm going to fix the scientific notation, one two and then back one two three four. So it'll be times ten to the fourth with a the decimal there. And how many sig figs do I get? Two. Two. So final answer, 3.9 times 10 to the fourth grams of uranium. It's a lot of uranium. It's probably enough to blow up a small, maybe country. I don't know, maybe small planet. Okay. Do you want to just keep working and I'll keep floating around? I'll have a key ready in a few seconds.